Okay, I just want to explain this screen here. We got our box pressure is at uh, zero right now. I can add a little bit by using a foot switch to the right side. You can see the pressure is increasing, the gloves are coming out. And then I could remove it by using a foot switch on the left side. And you can see that our pressure has gone down to negative. By hitting seven here, you can set your upper and lower limits. The other thing up here too, uh, there is no oxygen sensor on here, but it's reading less than one because it's not connected. So that'll always read that. And we do have our moisture sensor connected and it's reading less than one part per million. So we'll take a walk around the back and I'll show you the Well, here's the new moisture sensor that was added. And you can see the direction of flow is out of the box. Through the purifier, then the circulator, and then back through the heat exchanger into the box. That's your direction of flow. So the moisture is being read as it's coming out of the box. This is our line in for nitrogen. And we do have a regeneration gas line in here. And this is our regeneration exhaust. So when you do a regen, you'll need to exhaust that through an exhaust. Again, the two pumps are ours, they don't come with the system. Uh, just quickly, this, this is your on-off switch. This glove box is actually ran, ran off a 110. And, uh, this line here, I have it hooked up to a 110 outlet. I have the vacuum pump labeled. The vacuum pump on this side is a 110 volt vacuum pump. So we can turn the vacuum pump switch on here. Well, let's first turn the circulator off. So you can hear that the pump shut down. You can turn the pump on and off. Again, that's a 110 volt pump. Circulator switch here. The light has been uh, replaced. We have a light here. And we also replaced the window vessel. And you got to switch for your light on and off. You can see the light turn on. You can turn your analyzers on and off here. And then you do your uh, regeneration by pressing this. We can see our anti-chamber here is under vacuum. So what I would need to do is hit uh, refill on that. And you can see back filling with the gas in the box. My lower limit set to negative one, so once it's negative one, it'll put pressure back into the box. Oh, just one thing to uh, note too, you have these lines coming in here, which were used for some kind of optical sensor. You can see the yellow uh, indicators on either side. They're not functioning right now, they weren't connected, so I just, uh, I left them in there. Okay, I'll set the refill off, I'll open the, uh, on the right side. The whole system, system has been cleaned up. You can see the, uh, the chamber is clean, we've got a shelf. I'll just show uh, us evacuating the antechamber. To do that, you request the uh, antechamber switch. Okay, the only way to read the vacuum is using your gauge right here. Uh, so that's your glove box. Your glove box is uh, a separate system. It has its own PLC that does not include your left side of uh, vacuum oven. And I just want to explain a few things about this. On this side here, you're going to run it. This needs a uh, 208 three phase with a ground and a neutral. So there's five wires coming in through the power cord here. And the other thing to note is the vacuum pump 
here is a uh, required to use a 220 volt vacuum pump, so I labeled the plug. Right now, I just have a 115 volt pump here. It's uh, our house pump. I have it plugged into the wall, and I'm using that for demonstration purposes. Uh, also, too, is you have a uh, you need a cooling line coming in and out, and there's a uh, there's a valve here. So what happens with the power off? If I open this valve, you, you'll have flow coming through. I have the flow going right from here to a drain right now. Just to show you the water will flow out with power off. So if you're not using this side of the system, you know, we shut the water off by closing this valve here. But if the power's onto the unit and the uh, oven's not on or heated up, it's, it's, this uh, valve here will close. So what I'm going to do is I'll put power onto the system. You can watch it from the front here. I'm going to go ahead and hit the brake. Here. Okay, so I just turned the breaker on, and you're going to see that our your arm, which is is a brand new your arm, just has just been replaced. It turns on the power to your arm, and you'll see that. There is a PLC on this side. This unit is controlled by a PLC, and the power to that turns on. To get out of that, we'll hit the help. It may take a little while for, it, for this to start up. Anyway, there's a vacuum cleaner switch here. It does nothing. It was for. Uh, the rest of the system and I can't, the rest of the parts that came with this and it's been removed. So again, you can, there's no function whatsoever. Okay, now we are main screen here. Also, the VC differential pressure comes up like that. That will always be on there. That's part of the PLC program. Again, it has no no, no purpose on the system right now. Let's see how vacuum cleaner has been taken out. So the only thing we're interested in right now is the oven temperature. And you can see that they're being closely matched, 37, 38. And we do have a vacuum pump on, off switch, that'll activate that 220 volt uh, outlet in the back. But I'm using a 110 house vacuum right now. So what I'll do is I'll turn that vacuum off. So it's on that vacuum pump I'm using. And what I'll do is I'll just uh, evacuate the... Uh, well, let's take a look at it before I evacuate it. We'll look inside the... Uh, handy chamber here. The heated vacuum handy chamber. Here we go. Come out from this side. You can see that the heating coils are wrapped around the outside. And the cooling is being done on these flanges here, on the front part of the, this side and on the other side. The cooling water is going to run through that to keep these O-rings on this side and the other side. Just to keep them cool. So they don't leave well uh, for heat. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll turn the vacuum pump on to evacuate, oven evacuate. Just to show you, as long as the oven is off at this point, you're going to see that there's no flow going to the uh, cooling line. Okay, so now we're going to turn the oven off. You can see that the flow has been shut off by that valve. Oven is not on. Now, this is normally open valve that's kept closed by the PLC. We're controlled by the PLC. It should be closed right now because we're not using the oven. The heat. So anyway, looking at the vacuum gauge up here, you can see our vacuum coming down. And I'll, I'll shut the uh, evacuate off. Let me back up a little bit by using a refill. Oven refill. So we're bringing gas from the glove box into the oven here at this time. 
I'll bring it up to about negative 0.5 and then I'll stop. And then we'll run up the oven temperature. Okay, so I'm going to use this as a single set point. You can also, I'll, I'll send you the manual for the uh, 2416. You can also use it as a ramp soak type uh, segment, uh, temperature profiles. But just for demonstration purposes, what I'll do is I'll set the temperature up to 250 is the max. And there's an orbit temp alarm that will occur at 250. So let me just bring it down to 240, I'll bring it up to 245. See the output's turning on here, so it's trying to heat it, but without the oven heater being on, it won't work. It won't heat. And by turning that on, you see the oven switched on. At this time now, we're going to begin hitting, you'll see this temperature increase. And just to point out, the, the cooling water valve automatically opens. Show you that in the back here. This is your cooling line here. You can see that that's open now. You can see it's flowing through. Just to point out, there is a flow, uh, a flow switch here. So if the flow is not proper, it won't allow you to heat either. So it needs to, you need to have the cooling on. You need to have the oven oven turned on and then you'll be the heat. So what we'll do is we'll come back in a few minutes. We'll just watch it start to rise a little bit. It'll take a little while, maybe 10, 15 minutes it'll be up at uh, 245. So we'll come back then to look at it. Here's your purifier. Uh, while we're waiting for that oven to heat, I just want to explain that this, the media inside of here has been replaced, so you got fresh media. I did a, a regeneration on it. I do recommend that you do another regeneration when you get it back to the facility. And again, these, these, this, this is the uh, cooling line for the heat exchanger. You'll need to provide that. We're using a chiller right here now. So I will come back when the oven heats up a little bit more. 10 minutes now, and we're at about 150. So we'll come back to when it's at uh, 245, take about another five, 10 minutes. So you see we're at 245 now. And we're reading in here at 244, we're gonna move over at 245. We're reading here on the uh, DLC. And it's taking about 25 minutes. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna run this up to uh, 150, uh, 250. I have the orbit temp set at 251. I just want to show you that the orbit temp does work and what will happen is you'll get an error on the screen and it will shut the relay off that allows power to the SSR so it will stop heating. So we'll wait for that to hit the orbit temp. We'll come back in a few minutes. Close, close. Okay, we just hit 249. Alright, so what we're waiting for is the armor time, and it, that'll occur when it hits 251, if it does even. So let's, let's, uh, we'll come back and once it does go in the armor time. Alright, what I did is I went into alarm list because uh, I did an auto tune on this earlier today and it just didn't want to go to 251 even though I had to set to 250. So what I'm going to do is on any alarm list you're going to be able to see the, uh, oh, hang on one second. Alright, so that's, that's my overtime set point. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring that down to say 249. And here, this is what will happen once you go over temp. You get this uh, indication here. And then 
as you notice here, what happens is the oven heater turns off and you get an a, a, a over temp failure indicator here on your PLC. And now with the oven heater off, we're no longer heating, uh, allowing the heating signal to come out into the uh, SSR. So let's go back and let's change that. I'm going to change that back to 251. So again, there was a hysteresis of 5, so it needs to drop down to uh, roughly 245 for this alarm to shut off. It'll automatically reset. The only problem is the uh, oven heater is now off. You'll have to turn that on once you, your, uh, your air goes the way here. It looks like it cleared itself now. And you can see there's no air here. Well, you'll have to go ahead and turn your oven heater on again. And let's just go ahead and lower this temperature now. I just wanted to show you the over temp. I'm going to bring this down to uh, 25. Again, it's just single set point control. And you'll see that the output will go up. Now, just one other thing to point out is at this point I can shut the oven heater off. But you're still up at high temperature. so. The temperature that's being read back to the PLC, the PLC knows what temperature it is, so it's not going to shut the water valve off as it would normally if the oven heater was off. So I just want to show you that the, the flow will still continue even though the oven heater is off with its temperature. And I think it will continue to flow until it reaches a temperature of somewhere around 50 C or less. I didn't really check the exact temperature, but I noticed at 50 C it did shut the water off. I just want to show you that the water is still flowing even though we're uh, the oven heater is off. You can see that's, that's the water coming out of the cooling. It's going like no drain, but it has been hit before. And the last thing would be is if there was a power failure, since that's a normally open valve, it would just stay open. So if, if for any reason you're up at high temperature and you lost power, the cooling water would stay on. And the purpose again of cooling the water is to, to, to keep the, uh, the flanges on either side here cool, but there are all rings in here. And uh, they, they do get a little warm, and I know it'll get a lot hotter without the cooling that's going on. So that's about it.